So part four, y'all bear with me. There's gonna be, I'm coming up with this stuff off the top of my head. So part four, Mina awakens to see her grandfather standing in front of her and he looks at her and says, beware of the NOA. She slowly rises out of the um, recliner and her grandfather falls back. Now the, the bed is right there. So he falls into the bed and she goes to try to, you know, make sure he's okay. And she's like, Papa, are you okay? And he slowly comes through like he was possibly sleepwalking. <laughs> He was possibly sleep, sleepwalking and talking in his sleep. And he's like, what, baby? She's like, Papa, what, are you okay? He's like, yeah, why am I on the bed like this? Why am I on the other side of the bed? She's like, what do you mean, beware of the NOA? And he looks all dazed and confused. He's, he doesn't know what she's referring to. And she kind of shakes him. She's like, Papa, what do you mean, beware of the NOA? He's like, oh, baby, I'm an old man. I don't remember what I said. So she's like, okay. No, no, no sound effects, JP. She's like, okay. She puts him back to bed, and a couple of minutes later, she dozes off to sleep. So Mina does this off and on for about two or three weeks. Out of the blue, Quentin calls her. Because, you know, he stood her up. Out of, you know, he sent her a text message and was basically like, I can't meet you at the lounge. Y'all, this lighting is so bad back here. Sorry. I don't know what's going on. Um, he calls her up and he's like, Hey Mina, um, I just want to, first of all, I want to say that I'm apologizing for the other night. And that's when she like cuts him off. She's like the other night, it's been several weeks since that happened. And I, you know, it is what it is. I've moved on and you know, it's not like we're seriously dating. He's like, okay, but I want to make it up to you. And she's like, she pauses. She's like, I'm listening. He's like, well, I want to invite you out to my place for dinner. And she kind of thought about it. She's like, to your place? He's like, yeah. Um, I live at the Peach. What, what can we name it? Peak View Road. Oh, mm -hmm. I live off of Peak View Road at the old Peach Mansion. And she's like, the Peach man Mansion? I didn't know people still lived out there. And he's like, yeah, well, it's a long story. But I really would like to cook dinner for you. You know, if you're free oh, next yeah. week. She kind of hesitated. But she's like, you know what? Classes are over. It was a good semester. Things are going well with her grandparents. Why not? Why not? She's like, okay, I'll I'll come by. Just, you know, I just don't want to be out late at night. I haven't been out in that area in years. And truth be told, Mina hasn't been, what is it? Peach, Peach, Peak View, JV? JV named Peak Road. View. Mina hasn't been off of Peak View Road since high school because there was all these scary stories about that area. Um, It's full of peach trees. That's why they call the house the peach tree. So... You know, Peak View Road. Okay, baby. So, fast forward, the night comes to where she used to be there at the Peach Tree House or whatever. And she notices that all the houses that she remembers seeing there growing up are all gone. You know, they, they've been taken away. They're, they, they were shacks then, and so they've already torn all those houses out. But the big mansion that's there is still there, and that's apparently where Quentin is at. She's like, is he renting this? What's going on? Because he said, you know, I'm staying there, so okay. So she sees him out there. There's this big wraparound porch, and he's waving at her to come come drive up, you know, the, the um, driveway. So she parks her car and gets out, and she noticed that he's dressed very you know, casual. She feels like she's overdressed. She has on a really cute summer dress with heels, and you she's like, "You already told me this." I, yeah, I, I know. I told you, but I'm not. I gotta tell them. But I changed up the story for us, and it's gonna we're gonna get there. Okay. So Mina shows up, and he's like, "So you were okay? You didn't have any problems finding the place?" She's like, "Oh, like I said, I remember coming out here in high school. I remember exactly where it's at, but I just haven't been out here in years." So. They walk in and she notices a big stairway when she goes in. A big wraparound story, uh, stairway, excuse me. And she's like, this house is absolutely beautiful. How are you able to... It's none of my business, but how are you able to rent this? And he's like, well, I actually have a secret. This was my great-grandparents' place that they willed to me. She's like, wow, that this is amazing that you were able to care for this house all these years. And he's like, well, I recently just moved back, like I said, this summer. But yeah, before then, I had people who were taking care of the place. Okay, so it's that. So they eventually, they sit down, have a conversation. <coughs> they eventually have a very nice dinner. And she's like, wow, Quentin, you can really burn. 
you can really throw down in the kitchen he's like well that's another i have to admit i actually hired a chef to make this i don't know how to cook she's like that's okay what? Or yeah, she he was like, I didn't cook this. I hired a chef. She's like, well, that's okay. It's a thought that counts. So they had a great conversation. And he says, you know what? I would like to, you know, meet with you again. I mean, I, I would like to hang out again. She's like, yeah, um, I now that my grandparents are doing okay. And that's when she noticed that Quentin kind of looked at her. How are your grandparents doing? And she's like, they're doing well. He's like, yeah. So he asked her, so how is Mrs. Bernie? Bernie. And she's like, Bernie is doing good. Bernie is her grandmother's name. And then that's when she was like, wait a minute. How did you know that my grandmother's name, we call her Bernie? And he kind of looks at her and he's like, you never, I thought Why you told me that. Her big mama. Because, well, that's that's her nickname. But her grandmother's name is Bernadette, Bernadette. But her friends call her Bernie. And she calls her big mama because it's her grandmother. But Quentin referred to her as Bernie, her nickname. And so Mina was like, how did you know that we call her Bernie? I don't think I, I don't recollect ever telling you that was her name. And he's like, I, are you sure? She's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And so he's like, look, Ooh. hold on, hold on. He's like, look, Mina, I'm not trying to start any trouble or bring up anything, but I just want you to know that your grandparents aren't who you think they are. And she's like, excuse me? Is that why you really call me out here to have a date is to basically talk about my grandparents he's like no it's not like that all i'm saying is that you just got to be careful he's like yeah so if you see anything any old newspapers or any i will start there and she thought about all of that old documentation and photos that she caught her grandmother burning and she's like okay what? she doesn't tell she doesn't tell quentin that but she thinks to herself okay i'll keep that in mind so now every week Mina makes it, uh, she, she makes sure to go over to her grandparents' house yes. to have dinner. She makes sure to go over to there. Now she suddenly remembered though, that she had stolen a, she didn't, remember? She suddenly remembers that she had stolen a bunch of the photos and documents and hid them under her bed when her grandmother was burning all that stuff. So she went to that old, that old area. She looked under the bed, everything was missing. It wasn't there. At this point, Mina's like, I'm tired. I'm tired of people lying to me. I need to know the truth. So she approaches her grandmother. She's like, Big Mama, um, remember that night a couple of months ago when you were burning those old photos and stuff? She's like, yeah. She's like, well, I need to know what happened to those documents. She's like, why do you care? She's like, well, I need to know, you know, why were you burning that stuff? Her grandmother let out a long sigh. She's like, and then her grandmother says, it was, it was all an accident. And she's like, what was an accident? She's like, well, there was these rumors. This is her grandmother. There was these rumors of there being, <laughs> there was these rumors of there being some lost jewels on the Wilson plantation. And years ago, um, me and your, your granddad decided to go up there and look for it. And, you know, we came across all of this stuff and we really didn't find anything. And that's really what happened. She knew that her grandmother was not telling her everything. So she goes to work the next day. She sees Mr. Joe. And she said, Mr. Joe, can I take can I speak to you for a second? He's like, Yeah, baby, what do you want? She's like, Well, I was talking to my grandmother the other day, and she mentioned a couple of years ago, like I guess it would have been 30 years by now, how her and my granddad were on this plantation looking for lost jewels. That's when she noticed Mr. Joe looking kind of nervous. He's like, I don't know nothing about that. She's like, well, I'm just saying, like, have you ever heard about there being lost jewels on the plantation? He's like, no, baby, I, I, I got stuff to do. You know, I can talk with you later on. So Mr. Joe runs off. And she noticed that he was acting real suspect, real nervous. Why wasn't he? So Mina lets it slide. Child, Mina is letting a lot of stuff slide, right? This continues on. She she um, calls Quentin up and she said, you know what? I want to apologize for how I acted the other day. I ended up speaking to my grandmother and she she acted like she had something to hide. Is there anything that you want to tell me? And the phone was silent. And that's when Quentin said, just know that your grandparents are not telling you the truth. And that's all I can say right now. 
And he just hangs up the phone, child, uh, y'all, like a couple of more weeks. And she finally, you know, meets up with Quentin again. And Why didn't she say yes? She wants to hear the truth. She be, okay, but she meets up with Quentin again. Um, and this time, while they're out, her grandmother calls her and she's like, baby, can you come by the house? Your grandfather is having one of, one of his spells. So she asks Quentin, she's like, you know, I'm sorry. I need to I go by my grandparents' her. house. And he's like, I want her, but I want We're I getting want there. We're getting there. grandma to tell the truth. The grandma's going to tell the truth. She's going to have to, child. The truth shall set her free. So Quentin drives them over to the grandparents' house. And um, when the grandmother opens up the door, she looks at Quentin like she, she looks at Quentin like she's seen a ghost. And she's like, hey, is this your, is this your little friend? <laughs> You know, that's what old people call the elderly refer to your uh, significant other if you're not married. And she's like, yeah, Grandma, this is who I've been telling you about. This is Quentin. Quentin goes up. It's nice to meet you, Mrs. Bernie. Mrs. Bernie again, Mrs. Bernie. And so, um, Quentin sits in the living room while Mina follows. JB, stop. Quentin sits in the living room while Mina follows her grandmother into her, um, her grandparents' house, and there is her grandfather there, lashing out, crying, and he, yeah, and Mina's like, grandfather, are you okay? Mina's like, what is going on? And that's when she sees Quentin in the doorway. And he's like, are you guys okay? And the grandmother turns around and says, you, you shouldn't be in here. This is family. And so, Mina says, I'm sorry, Quentin, just go back in the living room. I'll be there in a minute. And so, that's when her grandfather got up and saw Quentin and he he kind of calmed down when he saw Quentin and then Quentin reached over to the grandfather and said um are you okay sir are you is there anything you can do you, is there anything you need for me to do and that's when Mina's um, grandmother again was like you need to get out of here this is family business we don't need your help and that's what Mina was like but big mama he's not trying to do anything he just wants to help you is everything okay and so her grandmother sits down in the recliner she's like I'm just so tired I'm tired of this and Mina looks at her grandmother all concerned and she's like what what's been going on all so long what is the problem big mama why don't you tell me the truth and that's when Quentin says I think I think you should finally tell her what's going on so Quentin says Mina and I think this is a time that I should let you know what's really been going on with me too so he turns around he said look i didn't want to tell you at the time because i thought this would just be a high by thing i didn't realize that i would develop feelings for you and we, would, and we would be dating but the truth is not only am i a historian professor but i'm also a pi i was hired by the family of larry larry kaufman the old caretaker of the wilson plantation to investigate his death that's when the grandmother looked at um mina and said i knew it i knew this would come up and she's like what is going on again this is what she's thinking this is what mina is thinking and so um quentin says ma'am there's nothing to be ashamed of we just need to know the truth what happened to larry kaufman mina can see that she's silently crying and she's like okay i'll let you know i'll let you know what happened to larry but just know that this was all an accident so mina's grandmother goes to tell this story Larry is the old caretaker, remember, that mysteriously disappeared. So Mina goes on to tell this story that occurred about 30, 40 years ago. They thought that there was these jewels and this money on the Wilson plantation. So at the time, her and her husband, her grandparents, and the caretaker, now Joe, went searching on the plantation late at night when there was no one there, supposedly. They were basically trespassing, JB. They weren't supposed to be there. So um, while they were there looking, yeah, they were trespassing and they weren't supposed to be on the plantation after hours. So, but they had been checking it out for weeks and they didn't think anybody was there right. But this particular night, the old caretaker, Mr. Larry Kaufman, decided to spend the night. So while they're looking around, going upstairs, going everywhere, they run into the caretaker and Mina's grandmother pushed him down the stairs. He and he fell down the stairs and he hit his head on the last stairway and he, he was dead. Um, they didn't know what to who, do. Who was dead? The, old, the caretaker before Joe, Mr. Joe. Mina's grandmother pushed the caretaker down, the, the old caretaker down the stairs. He hit his head at the bottom of the steps and he died. He died instantly. So, um, Joe... 
didn't want to go back to prison because he had just gotten out. You know, even though this was 30 years ago, he had been back in prison. He didn't want to go back. And and her grandfather had had um, issues with the police back then too. And so um, the grandmother was saying it was an accident. It was just an accident. Why don't we just go to the cops and tell them it was an accident. Now the old caretaker JB just so happened to be white too. Mm -hmm. Joe was convinced the grandparents, he's like nobody's gonna believe three black people mm -hmm. accidentally push a white man down the stairs. Not in Savannah, Georgia, you know, not in the South. They're not gonna believe that. Mm -hmm. So they decided to put Mr. Kaufman's body in the well and they cover it up. And they vowed never to say anything or tell anyone, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Of they came up with the story of Mr. Joe, who immediately came in and was the new caretaker. And people just assumed that Larry just ran off. But the family always assumed that something drastic happened to him on the plantation. And so Mina begs, begs, begs Quentin to not tell anyone, to not say anything. And he thinks about it. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna give y'all to the next morning to decide what you're gonna do. But eventually, I do need to go to the police. And so, yeah, so Mina's like, oh my God. So Mina races to the Wilson um, plantation and she confronts Mr. Joe. She said, Mr. Joe, my grandmother just told me what happened all those years ago. And he's like, I knew this would happen. I knew that this would come up one day. So he says, baby, I've been knowing your grandparents for years and I love you like you're my own child. And I couldn't imagine having to go away and having my own child. He said, you know what? It was my idea to come up here to search for the um, for those jewels. And even though your grandmother, who is, who is this is talking? Mr. Joe. This is Mr. Joe. He's telling he's telling Mina. You know, it was it was his idea to come up there and you know search for those jewels. And it was just an accident. He said, so you know what? I'm an old man. I don't have any family. I don't have a, you know, I don't have any kids. I'm okay. I can go back to the pen. I'll be fine. And so Mr. Joe decides to take, he decides to take the, um, the fall for everyone. So Mina calls Quentin and she tells him what they're going to do. And, um, Quentin calls the cops. The cops come, they all rush up there. Mr. Joe is already there waiting. Okay. They're waiting. And they get equipment to go down to the old well and sure enough they pull up the remains of um mr larry kaufman chow miss juanita is on the front porch and she faints when she sees the remains because there's hardly nothing there it's bones at this point it's been, it's been 30 plus years so there's, there's literally like bones and miss juanita i'm fainting on the porch joe was like it was an accident but Wait, I'll, I'll, I'll take it like a man what huh on the porch of what? On the porch of the big house. Miss Juanita was out there with her nosy stuff, knowing that she can't handle nothing, child. And when she saw the body of Mr. Larry Kaufman, she fainted. So, Joe unfortunately goes to trial. It is a long time. Mina's grandmother attends the trial and as Joe was being led out by the police, she mouths, she mouths the word, thank you. And he just shakes his head at her to, to not that he understood. Cause he was basically taking the fall for her grandmother, you know, cause the grandmother had pushed that man down the stairs. And so anyway, Time goes by. Mr. Joe ends up getting released after a couple of years. So now I'm gonna tell you the end, uh, end story. Mr. Joe, um, is there about the monsters on the refrigerator? Ain't no monsters on the refrigerator. And yeah, that is the end of the story, y'all. Joe continues to serve time for a crime he really didn't commit for the love of her, of her grandmother, really. So, um, but the T is, is that Joe, the caretaker the caretaker kind of had a thing for Miss Bernie. So that's the real reason. I don't want to say that right here, but that's the real reason why he took the fall for Miss Bernie. It's because he really loved, he was really in love with her. So y'all, that is it. Um, Mina ends up finishing school well. She gets a job there locally at a, at a law firm. Um, Quentin decides to stay there locally. He doesn't go back. One, one because he has feelings for her. They start dating exclusively. Um, Mina wasn't sure at first, but she continues to date him one because she wants to keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't run her mouth, his mouth, excuse me, by her grandparents. And two, because she really does like, like him. So they start hanging on dating more every now and then they do a double date with Courtney. Hey sis. <laughs> hey, light bright. No, she doesn't call him light bright to his face. They have double dates with Quentin. And that was, and that is it, you guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this story time. And the 
I'm scary. You want the, that is, that, it doesn't have to be scary all the time, JB. And that is the end, you guys. I will tell you a preview of another storyline I've been thinking about. JB, you want to talk about it now? Yes. So in this story, there is a woman that is on her way to a doctor's appointment. And... Oh, this is going to be creepy. <laughs> so... I'm sorry, guys. This, this is going to be another story series. It's going to be a series, but I'm going to give them a preview. I'm not going to tell y'all everything. You're going to just get a snippet. She lives out in... East, not East Texas. So this girl lives out in East Texas. We're gonna choose one, Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> hey to my 903 people. So this girl lives out in Tyler. She has a doctor's appointment. Yeah, and I... before she gets there, she gets a voicemail that's from the from the office that says, "Hey, just to let you know, we see you have a nine o'clock for Doctor So and So. Mm -hmm. The um, offices have moved to the old part of the hospital. So mm -hmm. the newer part that you used to everything is shut down cool so this girl is chrissy chrissy from tyler chrissy shows up to the building and sure enough she sees that they're doing construction and she tries to go to every entryway she could think of and she still cannot get in the hospital she finally calls the doctor's office and they say yeah we in the old part of the hospital the old psych ward part the old psych ward so she's like okay um i think i see the signs so she says, okay, I think I see the sign. So as she's walking towards the entryway, she looks up. This hospital has five flights. On the fourth flight, she sees a little girl in the, um, the blinds are moving back and forth. And then she sees an image of a little girl. She sees a little girl in a pretty little dress, floral dress, and she looks kind of sad. And so the, the little girl sees her. And so Chrissy waves up and smiles and waves at her, but the little girl doesn't wave back. So anyway, she makes her way to the doctor's office. She checks in, has an appointment, everything went to, goes well. And when she's done, Chrissy casually mentions to the uh, outtake coordinator of her, whatever, the receptionist. She's like, I thought y'all said that y'all were doing construction on everything. And the lady said, yeah, the floors are completely shut off from the floors three to five are completely blocked off for construction. And Chrissy thought that was odd. She's like, I'm pretty sure I saw a little girl on the fourth floor. And the lady said, that's not possible. The elevators don't even go up that way anymore. And the stairways are all blocked off. Chrissy's like, okay, thank you. She gets her card for her next appointment and walks out. And she's like, that's very odd. I know I'm not hallucinating. I saw a little girl on the fourth floor. So she heads towards the stairway. This is, this is exactly like the other story. They don't, they haven't heard this one. So she heads towards the stairway. That's part one. <laughs> All right, you guys, let me know if you enjoy these story times. Um, and I know a, a couple of you have, have mentioned how much you enjoy, enjoy the stories you have. I am naturally a creative person. Um, I have written a children's book that I've had edited. I need to follow through and eventually have it published because <laughs> I think it's a fair, I think it's a good book. Um, but I have all of these ideas of children's books that I have in my what? head and just short stories in general that I need to really write down what and follow what? through. So that is it, you guys. Leave a comment below. Um, and we'll be going on to part two of this particular story in a couple more days or so, okay?